You're watching BetSafe. We are talking F1 as always with Mr. Johnny Herbert and myself. And before we start talking about Monza, let's talk about a spa. What happened? Did it go well? Did it go wrong? Lewis obviously took the points, closed the gap. It went well. Uh, it went well for Lewis, obviously, because he got the race win. Mm -hmm. But I thought it went very well for Ferrari because I think even Toto Wolff mentioned it, that it was a track that they should have been at their strongest. And the Ferrari was a thorn in their side. They found it very, very difficult to, uh, to, to beat Ferrari, Mercedes. Lewis was very cunning, very clever, uh, and was able to, especially after that restart right near the end, sort of back him up before you get to a rouge. So effectively, he couldn't get a slipstream down the Kimmel straight uh, into the uh, the right-hander at the end of it. So he did a really, really cunning um, start. And I think what was probably slightly su surprising was obviously with the uh, Mercedes Lewis Hamilton on the softs, and it was the um, ultra softs, I think it was, for the Ferrari. Mm -hmm. I expected probably a little bit more performance, but it didn't really come. But I think that just proved that when that Mercedes was turned right up, Lewis was able to still stretch away. So overall, great result for, for Lewis, narrowing that uh, point deficit now down to, down to seven. Could have been a little bit closer if he had to, hadn't let past his teammate in Hungary. But anyway, it's, it's down to seven. Uh, but the Ferrari again looked very, very strong, very consistent the whole way through. They were good all the way through the um, um, uh, free practice that we had. Kimi Raikkonen seemed to be sort of there or thereabouts yeah. in the mix again. Didn't quite happen once again when it came down to the race. But I think overall what we've seen again is how tight this championship is going to be. And on a track you expected really the Mercedes to do very well. I know we sp I spoke about saying I thought Sebastian was able to do it, but it wasn't far away. If you look at Lewis Hamilton and we're forever talking about Vettel and Hamilton, but, yeah. but 68th pole and won his 58th race in a high-class battle yeah. against Vettel. Yeah. Is he starting to show his superiority? Can, can, he, can he hold his head a little bit higher? Um, for, for, from this championship this year? Yeah. In many respects, yes. But it just proves once again that how tight and how we're going to have a, a race weekend dominated like we mm. had in Hungary by the Ferrari. The Mercedes didn't get anywhere close. Then we go to Spa at a track that you expected the Mercedes, as I said before, to be to be dominant, and it wasn't. So this is where, although he won the race, Lewis, the thorn in his side is still Sebastian Vettel, because Sebastian is driving out of his skin at the moment. He's getting the best from that car, not necessarily on the tracks um, that we expect him to struggle. Um, and I think that's really going to be what with this championship is all going to be about. It's just going to be up in the air. But both drivers, I think is the biggest thing about your question, is are driving at their very, very mm. best. You know, the record he got, or equally in the record with Michael in the pole position, I never ever thought I'd see that yeah. again. Because, you know, Michael had total domination. Uh, and he's right, not so much, a little bit in early years, maybe a Benetton, but in the Ferrari years, it was more or less total domination. Um, Lewis, there's more races now. That's the, probably the biggest difference. There used to be 16 mm. there or thereabouts when Michael first came on the scene and even in his early, early years of Ferrari. And of course, it's, you know, it's that 1920. Yeah. And even talking about you know, 25 races down, down the line. So the, the record, it's like anything, the record books are always very hard to sort of say, well, is he better than him? But there's more races now. So you're mm. going to be able to accumulate more pole positions and race wins anyway. But you've still got to do it. And it's the style that he does it because again that that lap he did in spa was a a beauty when it in Pua, i don't know if it's down a hill it's a double left-hander and when i was racing many years ago it was still a downshift and then you turned in then you floored it and you went through the corner he went down there and i think it must have been in eighth gear he went into it and i'm rating for a sort of bing bing ba and through the corner he went ah, ah, and he was strong again yeah it was Wow, and I think Fernando Alonso, okay, he's in an underpowered uh, Honda, but he was flat out through that left hand. So it just shows where these cars yeah. are very good, I think, for the very, very best, because this is where they're able to show why they're the very, very best in these massively high speed corners that, that Spa has got. So a brilliant, I think, a brilliant result all around, um, and a great, you know, equaling, equaling record that he's got. There's a good chance he may be able to sort of, uh, go one ahead, I think, when we get to Monza. Are we seeing that sort of situation? Before we get on to other yeah. drivers, 
like I don't know, like James Hunt with Nicky Lauda, where you do get two exceptional drivers. Maybe, you know, ten years apart, they would just lead it. You know, Vettel would yeah. be exceptional, Hamilton would be. But are they push, pushing each other? Are we seeing a better championship for having these two fantastic drivers push each other? Yes, we are, and I think it equally goes across to the teams at the same time because Ferrari have really upped their game this year. They've kept that momentum going. You know, we're halfway through the season. And that momentum is still there because they're still not far behind. And as we saw before the break, they're actually in front of Mercedes. So that's going to sort of carry on. And then you go to the drivers and you're right. I think they are pushing each other. They are having to think out of the box <clears throat> to get an advantage. Like I said, Lewis did down to a rouge trying to back up Sebastian. It's all those little games that are going to have to sort of come into play. And it's brilliant for us. Mm. And to be honest, they were thoroughly be enjoying this at the same time. It's a sort of a championship when we get to the end of it, whoever is that sort of that world champion, they will be so, so satisfied with the job that they've done and the entertaining that they have done for us on the racetrack because they have been, as I said, right on the, um, the borders of sort of almost perfection. And I think perfection has to mm. be something that it has to be the team has to get it right, but it also has to be down to the driver when his visor goes down, lights go out, and that race start and both of those guys at the moment are, are clear of the rest of the field even you know their teammates are struggling to keep up as good a job that Valtteri is doing in his first time in a, in a proper a proper top team yeah. and then you've got Kimi Raikkonen he is a world champion but even he's not been able to keep up with with his team either so you can just see where they're in another stratosphere at the moment and I think that stratosphere He's just going to grow and grow and grow for the excitement for us in the coming races. And the best drive at Spa, Daniel Ricciardo. We haven't even mentioned him yet. No, once again. Did very uh, well. Yes, at a track you didn't sort of expect Red Bull to, to do well. Historically, they've won races there even when they mm. still had a, a power unit or an engine as it was back then that wasn't the best. And they always had great aerodynamics. They were very quick in the middle sector uh, this time around. And again... Got a good, a great restart, and I think that really put him in a brilliant position to get the result that he got. And he's one of those drivers, isn't he, that whenever there is a little sniff of a chance, he's there. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. His teammate's very unlucky, an engine, you know, or a power unit problem once, once again. We didn't see him get to the end of the race, and that's frustrating because I know those two, you know, you're talking about sort of pushing each other with those guys mm. at the front end, and that's what's happening with Max and, and Ricardo. but Ricardo is obviously being able to come out with it on top. But yes, you're right, it was a great result um, from a team um, that you didn't expect to probably be in front of, you know, one of the top cars, and he was. And Fernando Alonso, is it too long before we see him just go, <clears throat> I don't want to do this <laughs> Well, I have to say, he's dug his heels in and he has kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. I, I tell you what has, I've noticed this year, I had my little thing of a last year where I said he should retire and everything else. Mm. He's matured lovely. We haven't seen these rants down the radio about the power unit. Yeah. We, were, we were aware of those last year. We're well, still aware of them one. at the moment. <laughs> yes, I think he might, he might do at the moment. But... He's dealing with it brilliantly, but you're right. You know, the, the problem he's still got is he's not going to go to Merck. He's not going to go to Ferrari. He's not going to go to Red Bull. There was, the, I think, the rumor in in Spa that he was possibly going to join Williams. Yeah. But he's just moving slightly sideways, maybe a little bit forward, uh, with the performances that Williams are able able to do. Is that going to give him race wins and a world championship that he keeps on doing? And I sort of agree with you. How long is he going to sort of carry on in this predicament that he's in at the moment um, <clears throat> without a proper, I don't know, plan's not really the right word, but a proper vision of going, I can still achieve this because I'll be going here, there or there. Because he can't. Mm. He can go somewhere else, but that's going, as I said, sideways or maybe a slight step backwards in many respects so it's horrible to see double world champion deserves to have more world championships on his on his uh, on his mm -hmm. lapel but it's just the situation he's in at the moment but he's he's fighting he's still driving very very well as he always does but those performances aren't going to give him anything he's just going to get points points enough so the scores on the doors <laughs> as we stand <laughs> uh, Sebastian Vettel 220 Lewis Hamilton 213 mm. Um, Valtteri Bottas 1.79 and Ricardo 1.32. It's 
I mean, we thought at one point Valtteri Bottas could close it down. Mm -hmm. It's looking it's looking more difficult now, isn't it? Well, it is. But, do. but I will still say there is still a chance that if something happens, let's just say Monza yeah. coming up, that they both have a bit of a tangle, Sebastian and, and Lewis. They're out of the race. Valtteri wins it. He gains 25 points. Then it's completely different once again. So that scenario is still a possibility. And that's why at the moment his performances have been very, very good. He's been consistent. And as we were talking earlier on, okay, he's been beaten by his teammate, but he's always there. He has won races this year. He has outdriven his teammate uh, at the same time. So there are races coming up and we'll discuss those sort of down the line that yep. they might go towards Valtteri and then Lewis will have another difficult weekend. So the ingredients are still there that he's still got a chance. He's not out of it for sure. It's just at the present time with the gap, the points gap at the moment, you'd say yes, but I don't think that's a given. The championship odds are um, evens for Lewis Hamilton, 74 for um, Sebastian Vettel. Mm. And then you look at the constructors points, tells a different story, doesn't it? 392. Yeah. To Mercedes, Ferrari three four eight, and now, um, but that could change going in to Monza because isn't that a, a Ferrari track really? No, is it's it not? not. No, it's not. It's long straights, chicanes. You know, we've been discussing this all year. What car works at certain certain styles of, of corners, and the Mercedes is very good in a straight line. We know that. Lots of those in in Monza, more or less. The whole thing is just cut up with a couple of really tight chicanes. And what those tight chicanes are very good for the Mercedes is change of direction. So you can flick through those, get on the power, and then get down that straight. So it should favor, I think, Mercedes more than, than, than Spa, to be honest. But it'd be interesting to see how that Ferrari is able to challenge the Mercedes if it, if, if it can, can at all. Historically, they've always been pretty good there. So that's something that they can sort of take going into the weekend um, but I still expect the Mercedes this time around definitely have the have the edge and a nice comfortable edge I think over what they've had before I think what Lewis will be able to do which we saw a little bit in Spa he'll be able to play with the gaps and play the game that he mm. needs just to sort of stay in front without sort of thrashing the wheels off it and maybe putting too much stress with the engine so could you see him closing down those points for definite this weekend yep I think this is this is a big chance for him to get that pole position. Yeah. To go one head of Michael. Um, then once he achieves that, then he's going to be on that front row. We know he's very very good at his starts now. Doesn't have an issue whatsoever. Um, so hopefully that's not something I sort of put on his <laughs> put on his shoulders when he goes into the race. That's a bit of a fluff. But anyway, I'm sure he won't. Um, and then again in the lead, he'll be able to control it. So I think it's a Lewis Mercedes track. As we've seen before, you just can't rule out the Ferrari. You know it's going to be there. You know Sebastian is going to be very consistent the whole way through the weekend. Um, and I think that's where we're still a little bit, we're not sure. It should be Merck, mm -hmm. but it could be Ferrari. But I honestly think this time, it's, this is one of their str the stronger races of this second part of the season. So if they get the points this weekend it's great for us the championship comes down mm -hmm. they're going to be sort of you know level pegging or wherever it may be and i think that's going to be great for us for, for the future so this is a this is a this is a race they've got to capitalize on the strengths that they have to get the maximum out of the race weekend and i and i think lewis will it's a famous old circuit talk talk us through it what's the where's the bits you look forward to and where's the bits you dread uh well i always used to I tell you, what's what's good about monza and it was something i always loved way way back when we had much much bigger curbs those curbs have got a lot shorter turn one used to be a, a left right left right and then it went on to the uh the the straight going towards the second chicane yeah. of course now it goes right uh left and then down that down that sort of straight to the second chicane but you still have to use the curbs at the first chicane you still have to use the curbs at especially the second chicane through the ascari chicane especially on the exit the drive that you have to get down that sort of back straight uh, to that wonderful parabolica, the right hander going onto the onto the main straight, and that's where riding the curbs is going to be very very important. The Mercedes historically has always been very very good at that. It's always been able to absorb 
the energy that the curb sort of thrusts through the suspension and it settles down so, so quickly, especially after you get a little bit of bounce coming off of the curbs. So it settles down very, very quickly, which allows it then to get on the power and get all that speed down the straight. But to be honest, the Ferrari has been very good this year, probably the best I've seen it in many years, actually. So that's where these swings and roundabouts I was talking about are going to come into play for Ferrari because they have got a good car that is able to ride the curbs. That will give them the extra momentum. But of course, the power unit itself is still favourable to, to Mercedes. So although the Ferrari might be able to get through the Lesmos, remember I was talking about the open sort of radius corners that mm. the Ferrari is very good on. Well, the second Lesmo or the first Lesmo and the second Lesmo are very much like that which then drives you down to the old, the, and you go under the bridge, which is the old banking of the old racetrack to the Scarry chicane. It's very, very difficult to overtake. So although the Ferrari is good at that second Lesmo, it will come off it very, very good if he's close to Lewis. Um, I, I don't think it will be enough to give him the momentum because of the Mercedes will just have that straight line speed. But that's where it's going to be interesting just to see what they're able to do with the, the wing level. You know, the wing level is something maybe they're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of braking stability, which is massively important because of the 220 odd miles an hour these cars will be doing this year. And you need that braking stability, especially for the first chicane, for the second chicane, for the Ascari chicane, and then the Parabolica itself. You still need that sort of um, car that's stable. So if they can sort of reduce it, get that top line speed because of those long, long straights, but keep the stability that, that Ferrari looks as if it's got, as in that window we're always talking about, it's got a big window for, for car feel for the drivers. That may be a possibility that they may be able to, to work on. But Monza is, a, is mm. a tough one because it is low downforce anyway. And the speeds are gonna be very interesting to see actually where they peak uh, this, this year. Well, we don't ask much of Betso, so if you can just tell us um, one to three, <laughs> That would be that would be great. One, two, three. <laughs> there you go. One, two, three. Is that one, what you two, want to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you just put some names to that? That would be well, great. <laughs> well, I think a third. I think let's start at three because yeah. that was going to be a difficult one. It's okay. Ferrari's home track. We've got Kimi. He's got his new contract. He's happy. Didn't get quite the performance he wanted in, in Spa again. Not a fab season, though, to be honest. Not a fab season, though, no. overall. No, I, I totally agree. Now he's at his home circuit, a home home race for Ferrari. Yeah. That is the the, the Tifosi, the, the Italian fans are going to be going absolutely mad. They're going to be rubbing their hands for this coming weekend. Hopefully, it's going to be a Ferrari win for them. But I think Valtteri will be the guy who will be able to just pip him because it is the circuit favourable yeah. to the Mercedes. So, so we got we got the uh, the third on the podium. Second, I've got to go with Sebastian. I just don't think they're going to have quite enough to be able to beat, uh, to beat Lewis. Um, and my only question mark on that one, two, three that I've done. So I've done Lewis, I've done yep. Sebastian, and I've done uh, Valtteri. Is can Sebastian keep ahead of Valtteri? Because of that strength, I think that Mercedes had. That's going to probably be the big question mark. From a raw talent, the places in at the moment, the way that he's driving, I think, Sebastian will be able to, to beat him, but that is going to be very, very tight. I think actually the whole front two rows mm -hmm. are going to be very, very close, I think, this weekend because, there's, you know, those chicanes are there. There's not much time uh, per se. I don't think we're going to see loss between uh, both cars. Um, so it's going to be tight, but I think, yeah, number one, Lewis, Sebastian and Valtteri. Just remember where you heard it. And we're off for a cappuccino and a cannelloni, I think. Yes, indeed we are. And you can check out all the latest odds on betsafe.com from uh, practicing all the way through to race day. <laughs>